Let me introduce you to a car that you probably would be lucky to see on any streets in the United States, much less drive. This car could be mistaken for a late 50s, early 60s roadster that you'd see traveling around in Europe, maybe Paris, Italy, and you'd be correct in thinking that because it sure looks like that. But this is actually a 1991 Nissan Figaro. So you'd think 1991 Nissan that was almost when it was still Datsun, right? Because Nissan took over Datsun right around that time. But this was a project car and it was a special car that was ordered for just Japanese customers. And the original production of 12,000 was sold out instantly and that swelled to 20,000 cars that were going to be produced. And there was so much demand, in fact, there was 280,000 orders for this car and they couldn't fulfill them all. It was a limited production. And so what they did was they issued a lottery. That's right, you needed a ticket to get this car in your driveway. Now this little jelly bean on wheels came in four colors that was marketed by Nissan. And in Japanese fashion, they named these colors to represent the four seasons. You had lapis gray, which is what this car is here, and that was winter. You had pale aqua, that was for the summer. You had emerald green for the spring, and you had topaz mist for the fall. Now you'd be hard pressed to know that this is actually a Nissan, and that's intentional because Nissan doesn't want you to know that this is a car from the 90s because it's a retro car. It harks back to the 50s and 60s. In doing so, they intentionally made any designation of Nissan very, very difficult to see. In fact, it's so difficult to see that you'd have to come down here, which seems to probably be the smallest font ever used on a production car showing the manufacturer's name. That is very tiny. There's also one in the front of the car. Let's go around the front of the car. One of the signature elements of design that you see on the Figaro is actually this fleur-de-lis. And there again, you see in very small print the word Nissan. And so those are the only two places on this car that you'll see that. The Figaro was based on the Nissan Micra platform and it featured the fixed profile convertible. Now, this type of convertible configuration was found on a few other cars, but at a much earlier time, the 1948 Citroen 2CV and the Nash Rambler. All of the 20,073 units that were produced by Nissan were right-hand drive and they featured the three-speed automatic transmission. There were no manual transmissions made for this car. The Nissan Figaro came in a one liter turbocharged engine that put out 75 horsepower with a top speed of 106 miles per hour. And you'd be surprised at how sprightly it is because it is very light. Now, even though this car looks retro and it's you know, made to look like a vintage European roadster. It actually is very contemporary. It's a front wheel drive unit and it's very comfortable to drive. A little bouncy, but we'll find that out when we get it out on the road. So of the 20,073 units, which was the total production of this car, most have landed in the UK and very few are in the United States. In fact, there's no definitive way to know exactly how many of these cars are in the United States. One thing is clear. There's a gentleman by the name of Gary Duncan in Christianburg, Virginia, who owns 100 of them. Um, but they're all in his museum. So you don't see him out on the street. It's a, it's a, a very rare find. I believe the reason that this car exists in the first place is because it was really bringing Nissan into a whole new light from its reputation as being probably one of the most boring car companies out there. 
there wasn't much in the way of design coming out of uh, Nissan and this was sort of to break that mold and it actually was one of the four types of cars that uh, Nissan was bringing to the auto world and this being the most popular of them. A little history about the Nissan and Datsun car company was that in 1931 the Dat Motor Company chose Datsun as the name of their cars. When Nissan took over in 1934 they took the name Datsun which was D-A-T-S-O-N and changed it to Datsun D-A-T-S-U-N because S-O-N means loss in Japan and they didn't want that part of their name and also the S-U-N would be the sun that's represented in the Japanese flag so that was a better choice for them as a car company and all the way until 1986 when it became officially Nissan car company as I said this car was made for the Japanese market and you can see that throughout with a lot of the insignias and labels being in Japanese only so you have lots of little things that you know are curious and also you have this flare over here which I guess in Japan you actually need a flare to have in your car at all times and of course that's all in Japanese so that's uh, that just adds to the quaintness of the car the radio actually does not work because it was made for the Japanese market and they use different frequencies over there than the United States so even though the radio doesn't work you still have the CD player which for that era in automotive technology was very very early on you just don't see a whole lot of CD players in any cars around 1990 91 in fact the first CD player to actually hit the scene was 1987 but it didn't get mainstream until much later than that so pretty interesting feature to be found right there so you'll see that uh, Fleur de Lis uh, pattern throughout this car and you start with here and then you have it on the window controls and by the way these were designed with automatic windows uh, you have it on the defroster and other controls you have it on the steering wheel right it just shows up everywhere even on the uh, air condition and heat uh, display here you'll just see it represented so all around this car you have this really nice little play of design all the time and it's just the cutest thing in the world I mean this car is just totally cute nice little cluster right here uh, of course this is in kilometers and not miles so but very nicely done great design nice little custom key here not much space in the trunk for anything well not much room back there so trunk might be an overstatement but it'll fit a little bit of things because there's not much room in the back seat either four seats but not four people no way to open and close the top you simply hit this switch right here and that in turn opens this up take off this little area here raise that up and you have two handles one on each side and of course again nice little Japanese area here telling you exactly what to do which I have no idea what it says but I guess I'm doing it right and then inside you have two very easy to use clips that secure it down a lot of times in these types of convertibles on the small cars you'll see that this is plastic just because it has to go in and recess into an area and in this one it's solid glass that's very nice this is a 16570R12 <laughs> that is so tiny this particular Figaro is owned by Chad and 
This is Chad. Hello. And now I got a couple questions for you, Chad, sure. because this is such an interesting car. First of all, how the hell did you get it? I uh, discovered her online and fell in love with the car, and I luckily found someone online that was selling it by happenstance. Totally, and, Be uh, because there's hardly any exactly, out there. Exactly, exactly. So it just called to you? It just found, she found me. I think. <laughs> and I hear you have a name for the... Yeah, Miss Figgy. Miss Figgy. Yeah. And so how did you come up? Obviously, it's Figaro, but yes. any anything uh, beyond that? To me, uh, she just evokes that personality. Incredible. And how long have you owned it now? I've had it for, I think, almost almost uh, a decade now yes very nice yes so now this is such a rare car that it's probably something and you know I was thinking about the film industry myself last night when I was thinking about this car I'm like you know this would be a perfect car for uh, a film about somebody who's just like really really interesting like the character is interesting yeah. and she or he drives around in this car and this yeah. becomes the signature car so you do rent this out to the film industry? I have her listed with a couple picture car companies that uh, that place cars in films. But the problem is a lot of directors and art directors don't know that she exists. Right, about and, this type uh, of car. And because yes. also it's a right-hand drive, uh -huh. it's got to be in a specific uh, geographical area that the car makes sense. It is incredibly quirky, this car. Yeah. And that is the charm of it, is that not only does it look rare you don't see them it is rare and it's totally quirky it's a right hand drive it it has this uh, open roof design i mean the whole thing just speaks of like personality yeah. right the car that from what i've discovered just makes people smile yeah and i hope that more people discover that this car exists <laughs> absolutely because most people don't know that it exists and uh the one thing that uh, I have happen more often than not is people stop me because a uh, happy emotion that comes about and they are so in interested to find out what kind of car it is. In fact, just so you know, the way that I found this car was that I was driving around my small town and I saw this on the side of the street and I'd never seen this car before. Like literally, I was like, what the hell is that? right and my first hit was that this was some european roadster but then i put a little note on the windshield wiper for for chad i don't know i didn't know chad now i know chad but uh i put a little note on his windshield and he responded to that and yeah. and you thought it was uh i thought it was a part ah! so i definitely read the note <laughs> and uh, then like i said i was happy to uh to have you feature the car because i hope that more people discover her great because story of, yeah uh, because of just the uh, the great energy that she brings to anyone who sort of comes into contact with her. Yeah, and so we're going to take this out on a drive, and Chad, you're going to be in the left seat, yes. and you know, and I'm going to be driving it. Here we go. Oh man, the open top feels great. All the benefits of a convertible exactly. without any of the hazards. Yeah. Well, the car feels incredibly refined for being a vintage car you think something like this would be all rattle trap but it's uh, it's very smooth wow and picking up a little speed here acceleration is quite nice no complaints there it feels I mean it's the steering is a little bit loose but you know, this is a 1991 car with 52,000 kilometers on it. You know, this car fortunately does not have a whole lot of maintenance that's required on it. It's a Nissan and really, I mean, how much? I've had how, no problems really, just regular maintenance, oil change, yeah, fluid so, changes and other than that. So you haven't been, been having a, to do valve adjustments nope. and carburetor cleanings yep. and you know all the crap that you'd normally associate yeah. with like just a uh, quarterly checkup and she uh, yeah. she runs along nicely yeah it, it's a lot of fun to drive and it's it's just it is an easy driving car you know and you uh, you get used to the right hand drive very easily too yeah I'm already used to it, it it's almost like intuitive it just you know, in fact, until you just said that, 
I have not uh, even, I didn't even notice that I was driving on the right hand side yeah. of the car. I mean, it was that quickly that my body adjusted to it. Just the blinker. Yeah, the blinkers are a little, a little bit uh, of a learning curve there, you know, like, oh yeah, it's on the right hand side. I'm, and if I do the left hand blinker, it's the windshield wiper. Yeah, it, it throw the windshield wipers into action. Oh, this is just a blast. Just, just amazing car. So this car is incredibly deceptive, you know, because nobody knows what it is, first of all. And so it's sort of like a sleight of hand in a way, the way that uh, Nissan did this. And by the way, Nissan was one of the very first car companies to do a retro car. In fact, I think this might be the very first car to come out with the retro design. So that's very interesting that uh, this sort of paved the way for the PT Cruiser and the Volkswagen Beetle and the Ford Thunderbird uh, in its uh, concept. So very interesting little tidbit there. So Chad, thanks so much for uh, sharing your oh, car you're with welcome. me. You're very it's, welcome. It's been a joy and it's been and thank real, you for sharing her. And it's been a great time to meet yes, you. Nice and, to meet you as well. And really uh, And being our car angel. And and what's yeah being thank our you. car angel. And what's funny is that it brought us together. Yes. You know, like who would have known? saved us from potential issue with the uh, tire sort. Yeah, so we're gonna take care of uh, Chad's right front tire which is in bad need of repair and uh, I so already... thank you to the car angel yeah thank you we already got that all arranged so that he gets home safe and uh miss Figgy... and more importantly she does and miss figgy gets yes. home safe so, thank you very much yeah, thanks again yeah so that is the nissan figaro a great car that will turn more heads than you can ever imagine more than any other car that i've ever experienced this car turns heads this is Henry. Say bye, Henry. <laughs> I'm Greg, your car angel. Thanks for watching. Give it a like if you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.